Hello, I'm Manju Bray and I'm an associate trainer with Cardiff University. This is a two-day program where we address the fundamentals of designing and developing and delivering an effective training intervention, or should I say learning intervention. Now those principles apply to any type of mode of training one is going to deliver and certainly in-house training has very specific objectives for that training whatever that might be for knowledge skills enhancement capability enhancement because we are hoping that our learners or employees will take that learning back to their work environment and actually mem remember it and apply it in the work context. The recent events around COVID have meant that individuals are working from home, either full-time or part-time, and we've seen an unprecedented increase in technology being used to interact with colleagues. And in addition to that though, as well as working from home, people are needing to learn from home. And that has meant that an awful lot of organizations are transferring their training that's been designed for face-to-face -face learning to the online mode. Now, how effectively they're able to do that will depend on whether they've considered some key differences in that delivery mode. Is it suitable actually for the online version with the current format that's being used? So there are three areas that I think employers may miss when they're transferring that training onto the online synchronous mode. And by that, I mean, having the trainer available at the same time as the learners are actually participating rather than asynchronous training, which is much more passive and could mean it's a recording of some sort that employees can learn at their own pace and time on demand. And there is, is a time and a place for that kind of learning too, in terms of a portfolio of learning solutions. However, when employers or any trainer tries to transfer le learning straight onto an online mode after having designed it for face-to-face -face delivery, they are prone to a, a, a few challenges or obstacles. And the first of these is attention span. And you may have um, become aware that attention spans are supposedly decreasing regardless of whether that's uh, information that's accurate, attention span for a learner needs to be considered much more closely when you're going to the online mode because working from home, there are going to be lots of distractions that will take the learner's attention away. And so training design has to really be very incisive and prepared to go the extra mile in making sure that learners are engaged while being trained because without that engagement they're not going to learn it's as simple as that really the other aspect that um, we need to be aware of and wary of is the ratios of trainers to learners now in a large scale program you may have multiple trainers um, and can accommodate a large learner group therefore because you may have breakout rooms and facilitated events as part of the training and in terms of the numbers that you had in-house when you were training face-to-face -face, will probably have to be reduced when you go online because of the sheer nature of not having the ability to interact with individuals on a one-to-one -one basis. The technology is there to be able to do things like breakout rooms, um, 
many of the listeners here will be familiar with Zoom by now, as well as some of the other major providers like WebEx and GoToTraining or GoToMeeting. But the opportunity for interaction is key to engaging learners. And if you've got too many learners, um, then you're not going to be able to maintain that engagement. And so consider, do I need to reduce the number of participants in a training course when I transfer it to the online mode? And finally, the content. Is my content currently suitable and appropriate to maintain that attention and interaction with my learners? because we need to be much more conscious that we as trainers would not be able to necessarily see all our trainees whilst we're training. So we don't know if they are surfing the net somewhere else, uh, doing other things. You know, if you've got children at home, it's natural to be distracted. So what can you do to make your content more engaging? And that's usually a visual of some sort whether that be your slides, making them much more impactful with powerful vision, visuals and um, you know, thinking about the time you spend between talking and interacting with those individuals to maintain that engagement. It's um, best practice to do that every three to five minutes when you're online, whereas you could probably share knowledge in a lecture style presentation for a lot longer when you're face to face with individuals. So to summarize, um, at the Train the Trainer two day course, we cover online uh, delivery as well as face to face delivery, and we get you to participate. So it's a case of practice makes perfect. Um, so I look forward to seeing you sometime on my course. <laughs>